students today we are going to deal with the topic birthing a calipers as you see in this image this instrument is called vernier calipers as it was invented by the french mathematician pierre vernier in 1631 it has been an instrument for measuring various things as it can be used for mainly three purposes the first one is it is used to measure the length of an object and it is used to measure the diameter of a hollow cylinder as well as it can be used to measure the depth of a beaker in an earlier sense it was used as an instrument used to measure things their length their diameter as well as their depth so what are the parts of a vernier caliper so let us as we see in this image it is it has a inner jaws as well as outer jaws so one part of this inner and outer jaws are fixed the other part is movable and also the inner jaws are used to measure the internal measurements while the outer jaws are used for the measurement of external measurements and after that you can see there is a lock that is used to fix the movable jaws so that we can keep the measurement steady as well as you have can see a fine screw adjustment that is used to finalize the measurement and also after that you can look into the scale there you can see two different scales have been given one is a main scale the other one is a vernier scale so they serve different purposes so we will deal with it in the later period and also finally you can see a small rod that is being extended out the end of the scale so that is called the depth rod that is used to measure the depth of the objects so it is clear in this from this image that what are the parts of the vernier caliper so please be uh make sure that you learn the parts because it is important to understand what the parts of a vernier caliper is now let us see what are the two scales of vernier calipers are the first one is a main scale and it can read up to 1 mm in difference that means it has got a main scale division that has a difference of 1 mm and now we have the second scale that is called vernier scale it has a length of 10 divisions and which is equal to the length of nine divisions on the main scale so it will be clear when we are try to understand the different sort of main measurements of vernier caliper so the value of the one division on the main scale is 1 mm as i have said earlier and we saw it so let us see what is vernier constant or least count so it is an important topic that you need to understand because with the help of the least count only we try to find the the values of vernier calipers so vernier constant can be defined as a term difference between the values of one main scale division and one vernier scale division so when you measure an object before that we keep the two jaws the outer jaws and the inner jaws the movable jaws and the immovable jaws closer so you see if the zero of the main scale division as well as the main vernier scale division coincides then we can say that there is a zero error or later we see what it is in understanding of vernier constant so the least count can be understood as the value of one main scale division divided by the total number of divisions on the vernier so let us see the value of one division on main scale is 1 mm and total number of division on vernier is 10 so it is equal to 1 mm divided by 10 that is 
0.1 millimeter or 0.01 centimeter. That is always standard least count for every vernier calipers. So it doesn't change. So it is always standardized. Okay. So it depends upon two things. Always remember. One is the value of one main scale division as well as the second one is the total number of divisions on the vernier scale. So now let us see. What is zero error? As I have earlier said, sometimes due to some mechanical errors, the zero marks on the vernier scale do not coincide with the zero mark on the main scale. In this condition, vernier caliper is said to have a zero error. As I explained earlier, in order to find out the least count, we check whether the main scale division of zero is coinciding with the vernier scale. So, usually it necessarily it should coincide. If sometimes it doesn't coincide, there is what it is called the zero error. So, let us say there are a determination of zero error. Measure the length between the zero mark on the main scale and the zero mark on the vernier scale. So, there are two types of zero error. First one is the positive zero error and the second one is the negative zero error. So let us try to understand what is positive zero error. If the zero mark on the vernier scale is on the right part of the zero mark on the main scale, on the bringing the jaws together, two jaws together, then it is said to have a positive zero error. You see in the case, when the jaws of J1 and J2 are brought together, so we have to first of all look into the, the center part. You see whether the main scale division and the vernier scale are coincide. So you look into the zero of main scale and zero of vernier scale. So the zero of the vernier scale is coming after the zero of the main scale division. So it's saying, so they are said to have positive error because the main scale error, main scale division is having a zero before vernier scale or we can say otherwise the vernier scale zero is coming after the zero division of the main scale. So let us see how we find out, to find the positive zero error, the division of the vernier scale should not, should be not that that the coincide with any division of the main scale. So let us see if we have to find out the first zero. If it is not coinciding with the zero, let us find out which division is coinciding after zero. So zero error is obtained when this number of the vernier division is multiplied by the least count of the vernier calipers. So here is an example for you. And we know the least count is 0 0.01 centimeter. And in the image it is observed that the sixth division of the vernier scale coincides with the main scale division. So zero error is equal to the value of the vernier scale division that is coinciding into the least count. That is equal to six into point zero one centimeter. That is equal to point zero six centimeter. Since there is a positive error, that is why. We have a positive one. Now we will try to understand the negative zero. If the zero mark of the main scale is on the left part of the zero mark of the main scale division, upon bringing the two jaws together, it is negative zero. Negative zero error. So let us look at the image you see. And the two jaws are brought together. You see, the vernier scale zero is coming up first. And the main scale zero is coming at the second. So you see now, let us look into the image properly. You see the, the number seven of the main scale, the main scale is coinciding with the main scale division. So keep in mind. Okay. So that will be very important. You see, the vernier scale zero is coming before the zero of the zero of the main scale division. And also look seven is coinciding with the Main scale division. So keep it things. So to find the negative zero error, 
a division of the world would take that coincide with any division of the main state should be observed and noted. So we noted that seven is the one division that is coinciding with the main scale division. So the number appearing at the Bernoulli scale is subtracted. Okay, you remember that earlier. The number appearing of this Bernoulli scale is subtracted from the uh, total number of division of the Bernoulli scale. Then the difference is multiplied by the least common. So there is slight difference in the procedure. Okay, so the total number of divisions of the Bernoulli calculus is 10, as we know, and the least count is 0 0.0.1 0 .1 centimeter. And the sixth division of the Bernoulli calculus coincides with the particular division of the main scale. So, let us see uh, 0 error is equal to. We have to negative error that is why the negative sign is put here and we have to minus the value that coincide with the main scale division and earlier i mistakenly said it is seven but it is six and six minus ten into the least count that is equal to minus four into 0 0.01 centimeter that is equal to minus 0 0.04 centimeter so I once again I will explain how it happened since it is a negative zero error that is why we have put a negative on the outside and also in the negative zero error what we should do we should first of all take the number that coincides per near point per near division coinciding with the main scale division and that number is should be minus from the total number of divisions on the Vernier scale and the resulting value is multiplied with the least count. That is supposed to be we get as a negative zero error. Okay. So that is what it is clear. I hope it is clear for you. And now let us say, in order to get the correct measurement of the vernier calculus with zero error, the zero error with proper sign is always subtracted from the subtracted from the observed reading. Okay. So the final reading, in order to get the final reading, what we have to do? We have to subtract from the observed reading with the zero error okay so correct reading is equal to observed reading minus zero error with the proper sign so we will understand when we go into the details of its tables so now let us see how we do a measurement of an length of an object with the vernier calipers and its procedure so what we first do First, we have to find the least count and zero error of the Vernier calipers. As we know, the least count is what? Least count is the uh, number, number of divisions on the main scale divided by the total number of divisions on the Vernier scale. Okay. And the zero error on the Vernier caliper, we said whether it coincides with the both the scale zeros or if it is not coinciding. So let us find out whether it is positive error or negative error. So the second thing is then move the jaws J2 away from the J1 and place an object to be measured. So now we are going to measure a length of an object. So place it in between J1 and J2, the jaws. And move the J2 jaw towards the jaw till it touches the object. And tighten the screw S to fix the vernier caliper in its position so then now we have placed an object and tightened it so that it doesn't move so that we can get a correct reading of it now we are going to note the main scale reading so what is the main scale reading of the uh, distance or the length of the object then note the divisions on the vernier p divisions divisions on the vernier scale which is coinciding or in, is in line with any divisions on the main scale so that is very important thing we have to do it we have to look into the vernier scale whether on which division is coming at the straight line with the main scale division and according to that we have to multiply the vernier division with the least count okay that is called vernier scale reading 
So Verdier scale division uh, reading is equal to P into least count. Okay. So now the fourth procedure is that after that add the Verdier scale reading to the main scale reading, and that will give you the observed line. So Verdier scale reading you got. Now we have already noted the main scale reading. So now we have to add those both together. So that will give you the observed length. So once you have done the, this procedure, we have to repeat this thing two or three times. And after that, we have to look uh, put these values in these tables. Okay. So first of all, total number of divisions of the Vernier scale. That is about for the least count. We do know the value of one division on the man scale. Then we will find the least count. Then the zero. Now you will see the table for writing the main scale reading, Vernier scale reading, and when Vernier divisions coinciding, and finally the observed length. So that procedure now is just so. So and finally. From the mean observed length, we have to subtract the zero error in order to get the correct reading. So, and then, then we, whenever we should subtract the zero error, we should do it with the proper sign to obtain the true measurement. So, the true measurement can be said, or the first of all, we have to look into the observed length. So, observed length is equal to main scale reading plus Vernier scale division that is coinciding with the division on the main scale into least count that we know it and the true division will become is equal to observed length minus the zero error okay with the proper sign and for example let us see an example so let us look into an image that is given here you see it is given that we have a uh, when near calculate of an object reading. So, what are first of all, it is we have to look into which division is coinciding here. So, you see, it is the sixth division that is coinciding here. Okay. So, let us do. So, the P is equal to sixth, and Vernier scale reading is equal to the least count. We can found it as uh, 0 0.01 into the P division. Okay, P3 division that is 6 into 0 0.01 that is equal to 0 0.06 and the entry is the Bernier scale reading. And hence, now let us look into the observed scale reading. The observed scale reading is equal to main scale reading plus Bernier scale reading. And that will be, you see, that is third uh, division is the starting one. You see, after 5, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 is the uh, main, main scale reading that is just ahead of the zero division on the Vernier scale. So, that is the main scale reading. So, 5.3 plus 0 0.06 is equal to 5.36 centimeters. Okay, you have to remember that it is centimeters and millimeters difference. Okay, this should be clear. So, 5.36 is the uh, observed reading here. Since uh, we have to find out the next thing is whether it is free from zero error. If it is doesn't have a zero error, this will be the true length. If it have a zero error, whether it is positive or negative, we have to subtract the positive and or negative error from this value. Then only we will get the true length. Okay, is that clear? So we will look into an, another example. Let's say. An instrument having there are 25 divisions on the Vernier scale. Earlier we were looking into 10 divisions. So now a Vernier scale is having 25 divisions and which have length of 24 divisions on the main scale. So one centimeter on the main scale is divided into 20 equal parts. So now we are requested to find out the least count. So be clear with that. Vernier scale is having 24 div uh, 25 divisions but which is of 24 divisions according to the main scale and 1 centimeter on the main scale is divided into 20 parts. So let us see how do we find the least count. 
So first of all, we have to find out the value of quantum mail scale division. That is equal to, that is x is about used to do it. That is equal to 1 by 20 centimeters. Okay. We can answer it in the different way. We can do the maths also here also. And let us see what is the uh, number of divisions of the vernier scale. That is E n. That is equal to 25. Now, the least count is equal to 1. Value of 1 main scale division divided by number of divisions on the vernier scale. Okay. So, what it will be? 1 by 20 centimeters divided by 25. So, that is equal to 1 by 500. Okay. That is equal to 0 0.002 centimeters. So, I hope it is clear for you. This now, we will learn more about vernier calipers later. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.